You are watching the latest edition of the Wellness Hour, the leader in medical news and information. I'm Randy Alvarez. My first guest is Fred Pescatori, MD. Dr. Pescatori is the medical director of Partners in Integrative Medicine in New York City. He is the author of the New York Times bestseller, The Hamptons Diet, his fourth health and nutrition book. He is here today to discuss how food sensitivities can make you fat. Dr. Pescatori, welcome to the program. Thank you very much. Now, uh, before we get into today's topic, a little bit about your background. Now, you ran the Atkins Center, very well-known center, for five years. Yeah, I was the medical, medical director there for about five years um, in the 90s. So this was before low-carb craze really took off. Now, your practice today, much different than what you were doing back then, the Atkins Center? Well, the practice, sure. I mean, medicine evolves, science evolves, so my practice is now exactly everything it should be. I mean, okay. it, it, it's the latest, up-to-date, most newest information you could possibly imagine. Okay. I read your book over the weekend, The Hamptons Diet. It is much different than The Atkins Diet. How is it different, by the way? And how does it tie into what we're talking about today, food sensitivities? Well, those are two separate questions, okay. two separate issues. I mean, the Hamptons diet is different from the Atkins diet. For main reason is you don't have to get into ketosis. There's no gimmicks, okay. so there's not that. Um, I also separate out the fats. I think there are some healthy fats, and I think there are some really unhealthy fats. Okay. Um, Atkins diet never took, never took that into consideration. I believe that you can have healthy whole grain carbohydrates, you can have fruits, you can have vegetables, you can do all of that, and you can do all of that from the very beginning of a diet. So the Hamptons diet really, I think, is just, again, the most cutting-edge technology and the most cutting-edge science to date. Okay. Because diet books always have to evolve because we learn d new things all the time. Now, nutritionists of the stars, they're calling you. <laughs> Names like Sarah Jessica Parker, uh, Kate Hudson, Matt LeBlanc go to you for advice. Is that right? Um, one can say that, sure. Okay, okay. Now, how did you get this uh, celebrity following, by the way? Well, I think a lot of it has to do with um, just being in New York, um, okay. naming the book The Hamptons Diet, a lot of celebrities out there. Um, and I just think because it's an easy plan to follow. It's okay. an easy plan to follow, it works, it's customized, it's personalized, it works specifically for them. And you can eat. So okay. it's not a diet program where you, where, you, where you have to give them food. So you walk your talk. I mean, you look healthy. Absolutely. I okay. mean, if I don't do it, how, how can I expect other people to do it? Now, one of the reasons we invite you on the program today is to talk about food sensitivities. One of the books, Your Hidden Food Allergies Can Make You Fat. You said on the telephone that 90% of your patients have an ALCAT test. I guess it's a food allergy test or a food sensitivity test? sensitivity test? Well, it's a food sensitivity test. I okay. mean, let's, right from the beginning, we have to be very clear about this. I mean, okay. allergies, food allergies, and food sensitivities are two completely different things. Okay. One, food allergies, you generally know about because your throat will close up, you'll get hives, you'll have all sorts of bad things happen to you. You can die from a food allergy. Okay. Those are things like peanuts and wheat and soy and eggs. So immediate response type Absolutely. Reaction. Okay. Now, food sensitivities, on the other hand, which is something the ALCAT test measures, um, measures things that are a little more subtle, things that you may never realize is bothering your body. Okay. So what you have then is you could have up to a 72-hour reaction, or y you can eat a particular food and not know for 72 hours that that, that was the food that was affecting you. Okay, give me an example. So, for example, when it says food allergies or sensitivities can make you fat. Give me that example where it's a hidden food allergy that you don't even know about, or well, sensitivity. Most people would not know what their food sensitivities are. Okay. I mean, it could be the things you're eating every single solitary day. It could be, that could be the one thing that's preventing you from actually getting to your goal weight. Um, okay. A lot of people, uh, weight loss is a process, right? So a lot of people will get they'll lose 20 pounds, 30 pounds, 40 pounds, and they reach that plateau that everybody right. hates to reach. reach. And that's where things like an ALCAT test comes really in handy, because then you can get, really know what your body likes, what your body doesn't like. Because when, when, you, when you're measuring these insensitivi or these sensitivities, you're measuring something that's causing your body to be inflamed. And when okay. your body's inflamed, it can't function properly. Your metabolism can't function properly. Your digestive system can't function properly. Your body can't metabolize the food and nutrients properly. So that's why it's so important that we have tests like the ALCAT test to do to help us. So when patients go to you, let's say for weight loss, so they just want to feel better, how are you using the ALCAT? I mean, what does it help you do? 
What it really helps me do, the ALCAT test really helps me customize a program. So if you came into my office, you'd walk out with a different program than if the producer came into my office okay. and, and needed to lose weight or to get healthy or to feel better about themselves. So everybody, so the ALCAT test helps me personalize it, customize it, so that because each person's different. You'll never know what you're going to get from this test. And oftentimes people are surprised. They, 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 they can't believe that something as simple as chicken, let's say, okay. or salmon, or wheat is, is bothering them. Then they get rid of it and it, they're astonished. They say, wow. I feel so much better now. Okay. My headaches are gone. Um, I'm able to lose that weight. I don't get I don't get gastric reflux anymore. I don't get heartburn. None of that stuff. It goes away. Sounds and like an overstatement. That's not an exaggeration. You see that every week. I see that every day. Okay. So it's 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 yeah. I would. It does sound like an overstatement. So do you have patients that go to you, and maybe they want to lose that last 20 pounds, maybe for a movie or whatever. They do an Alcat test. Something comes up. Well, 20 pounds. They're not going to lose 20 pounds for a movie. Okay. Most of them are going to only have 5 or 10 pounds. 5 or 10 pounds, but they can't do it. Right. Does it come up where something pops up, a particular food, you eliminate that food, if I understand it correctly, the way this works. You do a test, they show a food allergy, say the salmon, and they're eating it all the time. They remove that salmon, and now they're able to lose weight. Absolutely. I mean, is that the way it works? That's the way it works. I mean, and it works time and time and time again. So it's not just it's not just one patient this works on. It works on everybody. I mean, you mentioned that probably 90% of my every patient gets this test done. Okay. Because I think it's really valid. I think it's really necessary in order to get them to be as healthy as they could possibly be. And, and the ALCAT test looks at many different foods. So you can actually customize it to what the person eats. Now okay. I have a list, I mean the list I use is 150 of the most common foods that I would put people on. Okay. That would be on the Hamptons diet. So those are the foods I look at. But if you came to me and said, oh I'm a vegetarian or right. um, I only eat green beans every day of my life, you know, we, we would do different tests and you can do that. So you can absolutely customize an ALCAT test for how you live and eat. A lot of bad press about gluten, for example. Is that always showing up as something people shouldn't have? Gluten doesn't always show up, Okay. but in my population, the patient population I see, pretty much 98% of the time it will show up. Okay. Gluten, casein, those are the big ones. Because is that dairy? Casein's in dairy? Casein is dairy, right. Okay. And, that's, and I think that's because I have a very self-selected group of people that come to see me. I okay. mean, they come to see me because they've read my books. They know that I. They know that I. My philosophy is more of a uh, Mediterranean style approach. So it's lean proteins and fruits and vegetables and whole grains and things like that. Okay. So they're going to come to me, thinking that they have those problems, thinking that they have problems with wheat or if they have problems with some, uh, with uh, grains, whatever. And the Alcat test will pick it up, and it's it's remarkable. So a hundred different things. It's looking at. Well, it looks at a lot more. Like food additives? It can look at everything? food additives, it can look at food colorings, it can look at preservatives, it can look at everything. You can literally, you know, molds, I mean, anything you want it to look at, I mean, there's pretty much a panel for. With the patient that comes to you for weight loss, take me through the process. Okay. D aside from the diet, what you're telling them to put in their mouth, take me through the ALCAT process. At what point do you say, okay, we need to take this test? Well, they get that on, they, they get the ALCAT test on day one. Okay. I mean, they come into my office, they'll be seen, they'll have a history, physical exam, just like any other doctor does, then they get blood tests. Of course, I run blood tests that most conventional medical doctors would never run because they don't even know that they exist. Okay. And then I would do an ALCAT test on almost, like I say, about 90% of my patients. Are get. they resistant at first? I mean, when um, I first heard about this, I'm saying, I don't have a food allergy. I've been some tested. Of them, some of them will say, I don't have it, I don't want it, don't even do it. Okay. Um, but once I can convince them, and, and it doesn't take that much convincing. I mean, you have to realize when they're coming to see a nutritionist, right. they know I'm going to look at food. They know I'm going to look at the foods that they're eating. So, the, so they want that test. A lot of people come to me out of referrals because their friend had gotten the ALCAT test and had gotten such great results. Their mother had the ALCAT test. So they want it. Okay. So they come in, get the test right done on the first day get the results back maybe a week, 10 days later. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a simple blood test. I mean, it's just like, you know, just get your needle in your arm and that's it. Very simple. Um, get sent off to the lab. Um, and then um, 10 days later, get the results back. And lo and behold, you'll be able to know what your so what format? sensitivities what are. So what format does it come in? It actually comes in a multicolored format. So it'll okay. tell you what your most 
what you're most sensitive to, um, then the second most, and then the I hate to call it least, but okay. minimal, let's say. So it comes in yellow, orange, and red. And then it also again, then gives you the foods that were tested that your body did okay with. Okay. Then it actually gives you a list of the, um, where those foods can be found, because a lot of people don't realize that soy can be in edamame, soy sauce, um, soy milk, soy protein isolates, mm -hmm. um, protein shakes, those types of things. So it actually will list where all the different foods are, list the different families of foods. Um, and then what you'll also get is a rotation diet. So they actually give you a way of kind of still having the, the foods in there, mm -hmm. but not really. You know, so, so at so first you eliminate the ones that your body reacts to the most? that you are the most sensitive to? Well, in, in the way I use the test, okay. I mean, and I'm sure every doctor that uses the ALCAT test will use it differently, but the way I use the ALCAT test is I will eliminate the most positive, so the ones that are in orange, I mean the ones that are in red, and then the ones that are in orange. So I will eliminate, I don't mind so much the yellow ones, unless they have a really long list. Okay. If a patient has a huge list of foods that they're sensitive to, then you know there's an underlying gut issue. You know okay. they have an underlying digestive problem and you've got to eliminate everything. Okay. So this food sensitivity, and again we're getting back to the difference between food sensitivities and food allergies. A food allergy, a true food allergy, you'll never be able to eat that food again. Okay. A food sensitivity, you'll be able to get it back into your diet at some point, but you've got to heal the inflammation that these foods are causing or you'll never be able to lose weight. So what are the common foods then that can sabotage health or make somebody fat? Common you foods. See? Um, well, sugar, I think, is the big one. Okay. You've got things like um, sweeteners, like aspartame, NutraSweet, those things. They also can, can keep weight on, even though people say they're diet and they're non-nutritive and they're non-caloric and that sort of thing. Um, but your body doesn't... Do these always come up? These on the artificial sweeteners on the, on the test that... If You're you test for them, they will often come up because okay. most people who diet tend to use foods that have those types okay. of, of products in them. Um, I think wheat is a very big one. Dairy is a very big one. Gluten is huge right now. So many people have gluten, in, uh, gluten intolerances. Are people surprised, by the way? They get the test back and they say, I can't believe this. I eat this all the time. Yes, absolutely. People are sometimes shocked when they get the test results back. because, And then they don't believe it because they say, well, these are the foods I eat every day. Okay. And then you have to explain to them, well, think about it. I mean, the foods that you're putting in your body, the most often, the foods that are, you're uh, exposed to every day, the foods your body's building up an antibody response to, of course they're the ones that you're gonna be the most sensitive to. So the Alcat picks that up as well. They and also pick up things that, they, that people have never eaten before either. Like? Well, uh, you know, so whatever, a miscellaneous food. Some people will say, well, I've never eaten a pineapple. Right. And it's on there. Why? Okay. You know, so there's always lots of different questions. So when the Alcat test picks up a sensitivity, what's going on in the body that's so negative or causing this inflammatory response or releasing antibodies? Help me understand that process. Well, what happens is when you eat a food, okay. um, it's got to get digested. So as it goes and then passes through the digestive tract. And there, what happens is there are microscopic little holes that happen in the digestive tract. Okay. And so these microscopic little undigested food particles get caught in your bloodstream. Then your body says, wait a minute, this isn't supposed to be here. This is a foreign body, it's a foreign invader. So it treats it like Whoa. a foreign invader? Absolutely, it treats it like it would a, a flu virus or a cold virus or any other bug that we get. Okay. And it says, Interesting. Whoa, this should not be here. So it sets up this whole cascade of immune response, immune system things, and that's why you get the inflammation. I mean, you have to realize most of our whole um, immune system cells reside in our digestive tract. 60 to 80% of our cells, of our immune system cells, reside and or are made in our, in our digestive tracts. So when, they're, when that's not functioning properly, okay. so many things can go wrong. So many things can go wrong. I mean, you could name it and it can go wrong. Migraine headaches, um, indigestion, um, weight gain, um, inability to lose weight, um, headaches, regular old plain old headaches, allergies, eczema, really? arthritis. So with headaches, how could a food sensitivity have anything to do with a headache? Well, what generally happens, somebody will get the ALCAT test, 
they'll eliminate all the foods. Then they'll come back a couple weeks, three weeks later, and they'll say, you know what? I've been having these headaches for years, on and off, and I haven't had them anymore. Okay. And then, so then they get a little incredulous, and they're like, well, could it be this Alcat test? Could it be this elimination diet you've put me right, on? Right. I'm not sure. But the real key is when they go and they eat that food, and then they get a response again. They get that headache comes Interesting. back. That indigestion comes and back. And they never made the that connection. That pain comes back. They never made the connection. People don't make the connection with food ever. How many people do you know actually either right. A, watch what they eat, or B, even notice any re reaction from what goes into their mouth to what comes out? What about fatigue, though? Uh, it says that with this test helps you treat people that experience fatigue on a daily basis. Absolutely. I How mean, so? Because, again, anytime you eliminate something that's an offender in your body, okay. something that your body doesn't like, you're going to have more energy. Because guess what? Your body is now eating nutrition, getting the nutrients from foods that your body responds well to, as opposed to foods your body doesn't respond well to. So it decreases inflammation across the board. So it's just like if you get enough sleep, you feel better than it. You feel great the next day, right? Okay. Or if you've had only three hours of sleep the night before, you're a little groggy, can't get through the day maybe so, so well. It's the same with what you're doing to your body. It's, it's, I always call it the internal environment. Keeping the internal environment clean. If we can keep our internal environment clean, then a lot of the offenders, a lot of the external offenders like um, having a bad day, like our bosses, like a traffic jam, something like that, things that make us so cranky and irritable and tired and fatigued all the time. If we can eliminate the internal stressors, okay. the external stressors aren't that bad. What about those people that say, you know, doctor, I have a slow metabolism. Do you find that when you remove these uh, foods that are causing these problems, that all of a sudden their metabolism is not what they thought it was? Well, slow metabolism takes on many forms. Okay. Um, and one could be a thyroid problem. So if you do the ALCAT test, eliminate some of the offending foods again, um, you will get your body's thyroid can actually start working better. So it could be without, metabolic. Without thing. medication. Without, uh, absolutely without medication. Without even, give it, without even iodine, without kelp, without any, without any help of any sort. Okay. It's just another way of, like, like I said at the beginning, um, it could affect your body one way, it'll affect my body a different way. Some people's metabolisms will get affected. Some people's thyroid glands will be affected. Some people, the way they digest the food, their bowel movements, irritable bowel syndrome, that's mm -hmm. you know, one of my favorite things. Okay. It doesn't exist. Really? Just take an ALCAT test. Get and eliminate those foods. Eliminate it's those gone. foods, you'll never have irritable bowel syndrome again. Okay. It's just the, the biggest joke to me is IBS. Um, so that's just ridiculous. So everybody's sort of body is different and I think that's what makes a test like the ALCAT so important. This sounds simple. Why isn't every doctor doing this? Uh, I think every doctor isn't doing it because A, they don't know about it. I think if they knew about it, like I did, I think they wouldn't hesitate to offer the test to their patients. So who's, a I mean, who's an ideal candidate for an ALCAT test? I mean, who should get this test? I think everyone should get an ALCAT test. Everyone okay. in America needs an ALCAT test. But if you're suffering from inability to lose weight, if you've got fatigue, if you've got hair problems, I mean, if you've got indigestion, if you've got arthritis, if you've got any inflammatory condition whatsoever, including obesity, diabetes, heart disease, anything, you need to get an ALCAT test. I mean, there's no reason why you should have any level of inflammation going on in your body. Eczema, allergies, psoriasis, These go away. asthma. Absolutely. The, everybody who suffers from any one of those things needs this test. So doesn't it sound like most people you know? Right, yeah. So you just take the test, eliminate the foods that show up, and then three months later you're allowed to bring them back in? Depends. What, when? I mean, it really depends on when you bring them back in. It could be three months, it could be six months, it could be nine months. It always depends on how well the patient follows instructions. Okay. So if they follow instructions really well, three months is usually enough. Okay. If they don't, it takes longer. Okay, so food sensitivity, we're gonna take a quick break. So food sensitivities could, could make you fat. Food sensitivities can absolutely make you fat. Okay, we're gonna take a quick break and when we come back, more about the process, what, what somebody could expect and the science behind Alcat. You're watching The Wellness Hour, the leader in medical news and information. We'll be right back. 
You are watching The Wellness Hour, the leader in medical news and information. I'm Randy Alvarez. We are here with Dr. Fred Pescatori, the author of The Hamptons Diet. We're talking about how food allergies, hidden food allergies, can make you fat. For people just tuning in, again, there's a difference between a hidden food sensitivity or allergy and one that's not hidden. Uh, tell me the difference again. Well, the main difference is that food allergies you generally know about. Okay. I mean, it, whether it's to milk or eggs or wheat or whatever the biggies are, you know it. Mm -hmm. um, you're going to get hives, you're gonna, your throat's going to close, you could die from it. Hidden food sensitivities, which are something like the ALCAT test will uncover for you, are things that you may not know you have. Mm -hmm. Or chances are you don't know you have. Um, and that's why it's so important to have a test like that because then it helps. It helps me as a physician fine-tune your diet. If you're coming to see me for nutrition, I need to know what to tell you to eat and what not to eat. I mean, there's mm -hmm. five billion people on the planet. We can't all be on the same diet. We can all be on the same page, but it's got to be individualized for you and for me and for everybody else out there. So how effective could you be without the uh, ALCAT? In how this weight loss process? With weight loss? I think you can be effective without, without having to use an ALCAT test to lose weight, but I think you're not going to be as effective. Okay. Your weight loss might be slower, it won't be as perfect for you, you might hit plateaus more often, um, you might get irritable, you might get those mood swings, the highs and lows that people get mm -hmm. during dieting, uh, the depression that people get during dieting, a lot of those things aren't there when you do a test like an ALCAT test and find your food sensitivities. How long have you been using the test? I've been using the ALCAT test maybe 10 years now. Okay, maybe anything longer. surprised you when you first started doing this with patients? The thing that most surprised me about the ALCAT test was how accurate it was. How it was able to pick up things that people had and they didn't know about it. Now some people will say, oh I knew I had a sensitivity to broccoli. Is or, that right? I knew I had a sensitivity to garlic. And they know it. Other people will say, what are you kidding me? I Is eat that right? stuff every day. Okay. I have, nothing happens to me, I eat it every day. And I say to them, well, you know, you're 50 pounds overweight, maybe if you didn't eat it every day. So there are some vegetables weight. that show up that when you eliminate them, they feel better? Of course, fruits, vegetables, I mean, these are all foods. I mean, we can't eliminate any food. Is it genetic? Group. I mean, is that how somebody has a food sensitivity? Are they born with it? I don't think, no, people are born, born with food allergies. Okay. They're not born with food sensitivities generally. Okay. Food sensitivities are really, I think, in, um, environmentally okay. based. You Whether develop them? You develop them because okay. of how you eat, what you eat, what you come in contact with, either how, how bad or how well you eat. It depends. Really all depends. It's in, I think it's an environmental situation. Okay. Uh, what frustrates you, by the way, in the world? I mean, you've written a best-selling book, New York Times best-selling book. What frustrates you about diet books that are on the shelves? Some of them. I guess my biggest problem with diet books on the shelves is that most of them have a gimmick. Okay. Most of them tell you, do this, do that, you know, stand on your head, twist during the full moon, you know, do whatever it takes. I, I don't really believe in something like that. And the Hamptons diet for me, um, or my book, is really just about getting back to nature, eating what nature intended us to eat, so real foods. So lean proteins, vegetables, whole grains, legumes, nuts, seeds, healthy fats, um, that sort of thing. And the ALCAT test helps me figure out exactly what that person should be eating. Okay. So that's why that food intolerance is so important. But the, even reading your book, uh, it seems easier said than done. We all know that we should be eating that way, but we can't do it. How does ALCAT, and, and I, and in my notes, they make a bold statement in their book saying that when you remove these food sensitivities that your appetite goes away or your cravings for these bad things goes away. How, how can that be? Well, cravings do go away. I mean, when you get your diet under control, cravings go away. Physical cravings, physiological cravings go away after 72 hours. Psychological cravings so you mean after may removing never the food? go away. Absolutely. Okay, so something comes up on the ALCAT test and you're saying, Okay, broccoli is one of yours, maybe cheese or dairy. You remove it, and all of a sudden they have self-control for the first time in their life. You've seen that. I've seen it time and time again. And, and it's self-control definitely over those foods. Because the other thing the Alcat test does um, is it's a, it's a nice psychological tool for people How who so? are trying to lose weight. Because it gets them, it gives them a roadmap. 
So okay. it tells them, it kind of guides them through a nice little way, path, so to speak, that they can go down. This is for me. So therefore, I'm going to be really motivated. I'm going to really follow Gives this. them leverage? I'm going to really do it. Absolutely. I mean, it, it empowers them. It seems easy. I mean, uh, you just don't eat what shows up on your test. Correct. A sensitive. That's correct. That's how the Alcat test works. And the weight falls off, in, in some cases. In, in a lot of cases, the weight just now falls off. Now, let me off. understand about the cravings, by the way. I'll let you finish your thought there first. But, well, we, I can work cravings into that same thing. It's, you have to have an underlying healthy diet. Okay. So the Alcat test is, n is you're not going to get the Alcat test and it's going to say you can eat ice cream and cake and candy and Got cookies it. and okay. all that stuff. Okay. So don't expect that to happen. So you've got to go from working from an underlying base of something that's healthy for you. Mm -hmm. And therefore when you have that base already and then you do the next step which is to really fine tune it for yourself by getting something like an Alcat test. Then you could say, is it, is it the pickles I'm eating? Is it the cucumbers? Is it whatever, whatever really odd little food it may be that will get you out of bed in the morning without a headache, without needing that cup of coffee, will not make your stomach growl, will not give you that three o'clock, I need to take a nap, or I need to go to the candy machine right now, um, you'll get none of those things. Your headaches can go away. Your arthritis can go away. Your diabetes can get helped. All because your body is starting to process the foods it was meant to process. Are there those patients that are afraid of the test? They're saying, I don't want to hear of all these things that I probably can't eat? I've never had one person be afraid of the test. Okay. Except maybe a child who doesn't want to get their blood taken. Is this for children? Absolutely. I age? would say 30% of my practice is pediatrics, and every one of them will get this test done. And it's different. I mean, I like to do it starting from after they finish nursing, then at two, then at three, then at six. So when you eliminate these foods, because uh, we talked earlier and you said you could bring them back in, does the body heal itself from these food allergies or Absolutely. sensitivities? Yeah, no. The body won't heal itself from food allergies, but for food sensitivities, food sensitivities, it absolutely can heal itself from that. Now, another way to put it is intolerances. So your body, and, and help me understand this, is not, it, 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 it's an intolerance? Is it a food sensitivity? I mean, uh, again, what is it? What is the test picking up? Wow, those words are really the same thing. Okay. I mean, it's something your body is Do you have a bad reaction to. to it? Yeah, you have a sensitivity. Okay. So it's, it's, it's just like, I don't know, if you, if you put perfume on or mm -hmm. if you rub against newsprint or something, people have sensitivities to that mm -hmm. or an intolerance to newsprint or something like that. It's the same word. It's all semantics. Okay. But the, the end result is the same. The end result is you're going to get better if you have an Alcat test because you're going to eliminate the inflammation in your body. When, okay. you inf when you eliminate inflammation in your body, everything gets easier, better, and you feel better. So this has to be combined with a great diet? I think the Alcat test has to be combined with a really great diet like the Hamptons diet. Okay. Uh, physicians watch this program. What do you want them to know about this uh, Alcat test? I think what I want physicians to, to really get from an Alcat test is that they use the argument that it's not 100% sensitive. No allergy test is, and that's what they need to understand. Okay. No allergy test is, no food sensitivity test, none of them is 100% accurate. So you've got to find a way to work it into your practice to figure out what works best for you and not to be afraid of it because the statistics are just as good for an Alcat test as they are for any scratch test, any skin prick test, any of that other stuff that they do because it's not very good for that either. So once they use it, you think they'll always use it? Any medical doctor that starts using it? I think any doctor that uses it, any doctor who cares about nutrition, any doctor who cares about seeing their patients get well, once they start using the Alcat test, will use it forever. Now in my notes, and we've talked that uh, off camera, that a food sensitivity could make you <coughs> feel sick. Right. How so? Well, let me give you a really easy example. You yeah. know when you get a flu or a cold or something? Right. And it's this invader and it goes around and your immune system has to try to really work hard to get rid of it and that's why you have fever and aches and chills and fatigue and all of that. Right. Same thing happens when you have a food intolerance because your body is building up that same sort of response to a foreign invader. So something, the Alcat 
is testing for foods that are foreign invaders in our bodies. It identifies them. Correct. So when you eliminate them, you're not going to get the fatigue, the chills, the fevers, the, the ague, whatever you want to call so it. So many people that, that have these, they live in a life of flu-like symptoms, tired all the time. All the time. Uh, achy. Absolutely. Those people things think they have to live like that. Really? I mean, that's, that's, the, that's the funniest Isn't thing Isn't that to me. simple, though? It's very simple. When you hear these things, and you're a medical doctor, do you feel like just, uh, and you're at a party, and they're talking about these things, do you feel like, hey, you just have to get the right test? Well, when I'm at a party, I don't tell people I'm a doctor. Right. <laughs> I mean, but does it go way. on in your head where you think, I wish I could tell them about this test? Well, actually, sure. I mean, I, I, I wish everybody knew about the Alcat test because it is so simple. I mean, it's so simple to eliminate an offender. If something's bothering you, would you use a laundry detergent that made you break out every day? No. Of course not. So why would you eat a food that would make something in your body happen every day? Whether it's headache, whether it's fatigue, whether it's upset stomach, whether it's gas, whether it's acid reflux, what have you. Why wouldn't you do the same thing? And we have a okay. tool to identify that. So these metabolic problems, slow metabolism, fast metabolism, but for these people that are having a tough time losing weight, would you say that 90% of the time they definitely have foods that are interfering with their digestion, with their fat metabolism? I would say more than 90% of the time, if someone's having difficulty losing weight on a plateau, they need to investigate an ALCAT test because they need to look at what their intolerances are, what okay. their sensitivities are, why, what are they eating that their body isn't burning correctly, isn't using as fuel, isn't making it work right. You want this to work right. You want your body, our bodies are very tuned machinery. Okay. And we, when we put something in there that doesn't work, I mean, it's like I always tell people, would you put leaded gasoline in your car? No. Absolutely not. So why would you put something that you have an intolerance to, a food sensitivity to, in your body? It's not going to make it work right. And unless you have a test like the Alcat, you're never going to know it exists. So give me some symptoms that you hear as a medical doctor that says, okay, this person has a food sensitivity that right. is causing them. Well, I don't want to sound like an alarmist, but I could probably list 40 or 50 different symptoms. Okay. Anything starting mm -hmm. from fatigue to asthma to allergies to eczema to psoriasis to hives to inability to lose weight to gastric reflux disease to irritable bowel syndrome, bloating, gas, constipation, diarrhea. All of these things. Runny nose, itchy eyes, all of these things. Hair loss. All connected to a food allergy or sensitivity. These can all be connected to food sensitivities, absolutely. Doesn't mean they are, but they can be. And you've got, from a physician's point of view, you've got to uncover everything you can possibly uncover. Okay, now tests like the Alcat, you think it'll become the gold standard someday where it'll just be part of every medical practice checkup where they look for these things? I would hope that one day the Alcat test would become a part of most physicians' protocols for treating patients. Now we're going to bring Roger Deutsch on the program. He is the co-developer of the ALCAT test. Uh, he's a science guy from right. talking to him. Um, why did you choose ALCAT and how, how accurate do you think it is in your well, view? Well, there are many food sensitivity tests out there on the market. Okay. And I chose ALCAT because I thought it was the most sensitive and the most specific, meaning it gave me the better results. Okay. So, and also, having used it now for over 10 years, I actually know its quirks and it's easy to figure out um, just exactly what is right and, and how it all works and how to put it together for someone. So okay. I think it's the gold standard test out there for Good. food sensitivities. So that's why I've chosen it. Roger, welcome to the program. Thank you. Nice to be here, Ernie. Now, Roger, uh, you're the co-developer of the Outcat test. And uh, what is your role with Outcat? Well, m my official role is a se senior consultant to the company. Okay. I founded the company that, that developed the test a little over 20 years ago. What is the hardest thing for you to explain to, I guess, practitioners about the Alcat? I guess there's confusion about a food sensitivity test and a, a true food allergy test. What is the difference? Well, uh, allergy and sensitivity are, are quite different. Allergy is, is our body's evolutionary developed response to um, a parasitic infection. Okay. And parasites by their, their nature require a much more aggressive response from the immune system, 
uh, a very dramatic response. And when it's directed against food, although it's very rare, um, but we do hear of these cases where a person has a true food allergy, the results are very dramatic, and therefore it's very obvious that a person has a reaction to that food. Um, intolerance or sensitivity is actually biologically quite different without going much into the detail. Okay. It, it's, it's subtler, it's involving a different branch of the immune system. Uh, the symptoms are not as dramatic and they may be delayed by even a few days. Now, Dr. Pescatori says 72 hours later, it, you may eat something and then get a response and, and you don't connect the two. You don't that's exactly to. right. And, that, and that's why we, we sometimes call these reactions hidden food allergies because they're obscured. You, you don't know you're having a reaction to now that how food. are you testing these in the laboratory? You work in and around the laboratory? Is that right? Yes. Now how are you doing it? It's a hundred foods and how, how are you mixing with the blood? I mean what's going on? Well it can be a greater number of foods than that or, or, or other substances. Um, it could be 200 foods for example plus okay. food additives and so forth. What we do is we get the blood in and, it, and it's courier couriered to the laboratory overnight. Okay. Because you want to get the blood while it's still fresh, while all the blood cells themselves are still alive, while all the various proteins that are in the blood that can be involved in a reaction to a food or a substance are still viable. And the first thing we do is we, we dilute this blood into a buffer and then we divide it into very pre precise sub-samples -sam so that uh, a small quantity of the blood is exposed to each one of the 100 or 200 or 250 different items. Essentially what we're trying to do is create the same kind of conditions in the laboratory that do exist when a person is exposed to this um, array of foods or, or, okay. or food, food additives or chemicals and so forth. So the blood, while it's still alive and in its whole form, it's not separated out at all, it is exposed to each one of these individual items and allowed to interact with the food or the substance at body temperature for a period of time. The next step is that um, some of the samples go through the analyzer. Now these are samples that we use as a control to create a baseline, which is a picture of, the, uh, of your blood without exposure to the allergen and get, a, get an idea of the condition of your white blood cells uh, on, a, on a baseline basis, if that makes sense. Okay. And then we get, um, we put each individual test sample through the same analyzer, and that helps us to determine whether or not the immune system cells have reacted to the food or the, or the chemical uh, within the test tube under these conditions. It gives us a very clear indication as to whether or not you will react to this food or this substance when you actually are exposed to it or when you eat it. Okay, just suppose, let's take pork for example. That is, so I understand this correctly, it's put into the blood and then the white blood cells react, they bulge, what, what happens? I well, mean, how do you know? What happens? Well, there's a couple of different things that can happen. Uh, typically, the um, white blood cells can actually be seen to be releasing chemical mediators which are intended to neutralize or destroy the food uh, and they're mistaking the food for being a bacteria or, or a virus that is potentially damaging. You could actually see, if you were to look under a microscope, these chemicals being released from the cell. And it's important to note that this process is what is the major source of the inflammatory process that we're seeing occurring uh, across the board with so many disease states that are common in modern day industrial society. Okay, aside from foods and you know vegetables, what, what else are you looking at? Well, we look at, we look at the fr all categories of foods and spices and the things that people are exposed to, including some of the common um, items that are added to food for preservation or flavor enhancement or colorings. What about coffee, tea, and things like that, caffeine? Sure, yeah, a person can have an, an adverse reaction or a sensitivity to, to coffee or to tea or various herbs or condiments to, to dairy products, to, to meats, to, to, to eggs, to, to uh, fish, poultry, grains. Um, it can be anything, really. In your book, Your Hidden Food Allergies Are Making You Fat, you make a statement. You say that the Alcat is a medical breakthrough for the 21st century. Uh, elaborate on that. Well, I believe it is a medical breakthrough. Um, I like to sometimes say it's a it's a 2,500 year old new paradigm, which sounds like a paradox, but it was about 2,500 years ago that Hippocrates stated, "Let thy food be thy medicine, and thy medicine be thy food." 
Okay. So we, we very, it's a cliche of course, but we very much are what we eat. Now the question is, nowadays, food has changed so much, um, particularly in the last 50, 60 years with the uh, onset, for lack of a better term, of commercialized agriculture. Okay. Um, foods are grown not in the way that they used to be, and it's not really the same food. We now have manipulation of foods with uh, genetic techniques. We now have uh, transportation of foods from one part of the world to the other, and therefore people are eating foods that they're not real, that their ancestors did not eat. They may not have evolved. So the you see enzymes. reactions in the laboratory to these foods. We we see the reactions in the laboratories to the foods that really reflects the reactions that people in society are having to these foods. That's, wh that's what this is all about. Dr. Pescatori, you know, he says, let thy food be thy medicine, thy medicine be thy food. Do you think, do you use food as a medicine in your practice? Absolutely. Is that an overstatement? No, that is the basis of everything I do. Um, when a patient walks into my office, first thing I do is establish or reestablish their diet. That is the bottom rung of the pyramid of health. Okay. If you cannot get your diet right, there's no amount, it's like sticking your fingers in a dike until something else will fall apart. You've okay. got to get the base of the pyramid done, which is getting your diet right. I want to see if you agree with this. In his book, uh, and I'm quoting your book, uh, Roger, that he says that he compares foods to drugs. And just like uh, drugs have side effects, if foods have side effects. You agree with that? Food is a drug. Well, or can act like a drug. Foods certainly can act like drugs, and foods certainly can have side effects. But I think the real important take-home message is that what might have a side effect for me may not be the same side effect for you. And okay. so you can't expect it. That's why an ALCAT test is so important, because each person is individualized, and it will be different for you and for me. So food is absolutely a medicine. I mean, when you think about what's in there, I mean, you've got you've got antioxidants, you've got vitamins, you've got minerals. I mean, this is where we're supposed to get our nutrition from. We don't anymore. We don't mm -hmm. get our nutrition from there. That's why we have a nutritional supplement industry that's huge in this country, because we've got to get it from other sources, because it's impossible to get it from the foods that we eat because of the way the food's manufactured. So, Roger, how accurate uh, over at your lab do you think you are at mimicking the result of a food uh, it, compared to in the human body? Well, um, f fortunately there have been some very important and rigorous studies done so that I don't have to really ex express what I think. It's been documented. Um, there have been some studies that have compared the results of ALCAT tests with what is considered the gold standard in this form of testing, and that is a double-blind oral challenge, whereby the person actually eats the food uh, under double-blind conditions, meaning that neither the person eating the food or the researcher who may Got be a it. physician or a dietitian uh, instructing them to eat the food know whether the ALCAT test predicted it as being an offending food or, or, or safe food. And the correlations with foods and, uh, uh, and, and eating the foods and the results of the test are 84%. And in a study also very carefully done comparing oral challenges of food additives with ALCAT test results, the correlation was actually 96%. So the, the accuracy level is extremely high. Roger, these, uh, these tests, I mean this company is nationwide? Yes, this test is available not only throughout the United States, but um, through most places in the world. Now, how does somebody find a doctor uh, like Dr. Pescatori that uh, sees this of value? Because not all doctors, I guess, are even know about this or are using it. Not all doctors are using it, and certainly not all doctors know about it yet. Um, the way to get a referral is, is to contact the laboratory, and we have a database of... Uh, of referring physicians. Roger, the subtitle of your book has to do with longevity. Why did you choose that uh, subtitle? I mean, what is the connection with food sensitivities? There is a strong connection, Randy. Um, the proper diet, a, a diet which is compatible with a person's individual biochemistry, I think is the strongest, most powerful anti-aging medicine that exists. And, and the reason is this. Um, the very foundation um, theory of anti-aging is that free radicals which are produced in the body from a couple of different sources. W the major source being the activated immune system okay. is the major cause of, of aging. 
essentially free radicals which are produced in order to, it's not the only source of production, but the immune system is the major source of production of free radicals which can dis denature DNA, destroy DNA. This uh, is uh, free radicals to, to free fight radicals. off foreign invaders? Um, free radicals are produced by the immune system, yes, in order to defend the body against invading microorganisms. So you're saying by eliminating the foods that... By eliminating the foods that the body mistakenly uh, attacks as though they were um, pathogenic microorganisms like a pathogenic virus or the bacteria, means that the immune system calms down and we don't have that inflammatory process occurring on a chronic basis. Now that inflammatory process is damaging to protein structures, which means hormones and chemical messengers. It's damaging to cell membranes okay. so that the cells don't function properly. Well, let me it's ask Dr. Pescatore for a second. Do you think these hidden food allergies can put stress on the immune system? Absolutely. I mean, that's what we've been talking about this okay. whole time is that an intolerance in your body will put stress on the immune system and the immune system is overreacting to all of this. So the whole purpose of anti-aging, the whole purpose of trying to live better is to decrease inflammation in our body. Okay. And that's how, that's, I think the ALCAT test is the easiest and first place we should all start. Roger, I want to thank you for coming on the show. Very interesting. My pleasure. Thank you. Okay, Dr. Pescatore, thanks for coming on the program. Very interesting. Uh, somebody watching this, uh, what do you say to them? They, they've self-diagnosed themselves saying, I have a food sensitivity, hidden food allergy. Go find a doctor that can give you this test. Call the company, have them refer you to somebody that can do it, and get the ALCAT test done. It's the first way to start. Great. Thanks for coming on the show. Thank you. You've been watching The Wellness Hour, the leader in medical news and information. I'm Randy Alvarez. If you would like to see this program again online, visit our website at wellnesshour.com. For now, I wish you good health.